Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to round 4 of Candidates Tournament 2020 held in Yekaterinburg in Russia. And today I'm gonna show you the game between these two gentlemen. I hope everybody knows them. Uh, so we have Alexander Grishuk from Russia, number 4 in the world, veteran of uh, chess uh, top tournaments. He's already 36 years old and he's ranking 2777 and he play as black. And his opponent, uh, Maxime Vachel Lagraf from France, he's ranking 2767, slightly lower uh, than Grishuk, and that means he is number eight in the world. So very, very crowdy, you know, on the top level. Uh, and he's 29 years old. So uh, we know everything about the player. So without further ado, let's jump into the game and let's see why Grishuk. Uh, thinks so much, uh, you know, on the game, like you see in the picture. So uh, Maxime Vachel Lagraf open with e4. We have e5, knight on f3, knight on c6, bishop b5, uh, Rui Lopez on the board and knight f6. So Berlin defense by Grishuk. He played this quite often. And now we have uh, castle by white. Uh, and here the players just blitz the moves because they played plenty of times. So knight on e4. This is all the theory. We have d4 and knight on d6 attacking the bishop. So bishop c6, d takes on c6. Now d takes on e5 with attack on the knight. So knight move on f5 exchanging the queens on d8 uh, so uh, black can't do castle but that's all the you know very very strong theory. We have h3 by white king on e8 now knight on c3 and now h5 so securing position of the knight uh, preventing uh, g4 we have bishop on f4 uh, developing the bishop and now bishop on e7 we have rook a on d1 so centralizing the the rook bishop on e6 knight g5 attacking the rook rook on h6 so black don't want um, you know to have uh, messed the pawn structure like one pawn here and two pawns here uh, that wouldn't be uh, great for them this is why rook h6 is played uh, we have rook f on e1 and bishop on b4 pinning this knight so uh, knight can't move now and here g4 is the most popular move here but uh, maxim vasil lagraf play couple of times a3 we have uh, bishop takes on c3 b takes on c3 and h4 by Grishuk and here Maxim Vachel Lagraf have two choices so he can play knight on e4 or g4 and he choose g4 and he played that already against Nakamura two years ago so he knows that line uh, very well um, we have h takes on g3 f takes on g3 and here Grishuk started to think and he started to think for 53 minutes. That means he uh, he spent half of his time uh, for this move. And he played knight on e7. Uh, other movies like king on f8, that, that this move were played uh, in the past. And knight on e7 was well-known move. So uh, Grishuk in the interview after, he was very angry that he spent so much time. But he started to calculate everything what he can play um, after knight on e7 and then uh, g4. g4 was... Uh, what MVL play against Nakamura and then after knight on d5, bishop on d2 defending and this pawn, knight on b6 and king on g2, the game ended in the draw, the players of course play it much more but the game ended in the draw. However, after knight on e7, uh, Maxim Vachel Lagraf play h4. So he changed, he, he played something else. Uh, Grishuk play the same like Nakamura, knight on d5, of course the strongest move, now attacking the bishop. Uh, and here bishop not on d2. Uh, here actually Maxim Vachel Lagraf play bishop on c1. So sacrificing this pawn, um, which is not really strong here, and trying to remaneuver the bishop on a3. So the plan is to move the pawn uh, to a4 and then bishop on a3 and this bishop would be very very strong on this diagonal. So that's uh, Maxime Vachir Lagraf 
plan. Knight on c3 was played by Grishuk. We have rook on d3 attacking the knight. Knight of course have to move, so knight on a4, blocking a3, so now uh, the pawn can't be moved and make a space for the bishop. Uh, we have rook on f3, moving the rook to the uh, to the semi-open file and finding the new weakness um, on f7 and try to exploit it. Now uh, it can be attacked very easy. We have bishop on d5, attacking the rook on f3, so rook has to be moved, uh, rook f4, and now knight on b6 by black. We have rook e on f1 as planned and now rook on g6. This is actually the only move which prevents to uh, this attack on f7 because this pawn can't be defended anymore but if knight takes on f7 then rook now uh, can take on g3. That's of course uh, not great for white. So we have rook on f5. Uh, important move because h5 is the threat now. Uh, before the knight was hanging, so and now have two defenders uh, on the on the g5. Uh, and here we have bishop on c4, uh, so attacking the rook. And here is the problem now. The rook has to be moved. And if white want to stay on this semi-open f file and play something like um, rook on f2, then the problem is rook on d8. And white have to be very, very careful. They cannot play like something like king on h2, because now rook on d1 attacking the bishop. Bishop have to be moved, of course. And now this bishop can move to d5. And now this is a checkmating idea here, very dangerous. So white have to play something like g4 and the position is uh, very, very unpleasant for white. Uh, this is why in this position uh, bishop on d2 would have to be played, misplacing this bishop, not really great. Uh, so uh, that's impossible to just uh, stay with this rook on the f file. This is why we have rook on e1. Rook on e1 is also very strong because it's behind the um, uh, e pawn and now black have to do something. So we have king on e7 making a space uh, on the 8th rank so the rook can move freely over there. But now uh, Maxim Vachel Lagraf play h5. So something have to be done here and black can um, react um, uh, two ways. So a bishop on e6 can be played and then after h takes on g6 uh, bishop takes on f5, g takes on f7, uh, bishop on e6. Uh, the position is maybe slightly better for black because um, these two pawns not gonna survive too long, uh, but the game could continue. However, we have rook on h6 and g4, so locking this position and this rook has nothing to do on the 6th rank anymore. So uh, Grishuk play a rook on h8. And here Maxim Vachel Lagraf uh, can choose what to play next. So have to choose very careful the plan. Uh, so e6 is possible. Um, and then of course f takes on e6 is losing because after rook on f7, king d6, uh, bishop on f4, we check the king is totally misplaced and it's hunted in the center of, of the board. So king c5, knight on e4, uh, king um, d5, knight c3, uh, King d4, now bishop on e5 with check defending the knight, king c5, bishop g7, and these two pawns are gonna win the game. Of course, this king is totally misplaced, so uh, not an option. This is why after e6, f6 have to be played. And now white can choose, move the knight, but they also can play uh, anything else like e4. And if black takes the knight, actually bishop on g5 is coming, king on e8, rook f7, and white is down the piece, but the position is estimated by the engine as better for white. So definitely e6 was an option. However, here, uh, Maxime Vachel Lagraf uh, choose a4. It's also very, very strong move. And now Grishuk, believe me or not, he still have to make 12 moves until the time control. And he has less than two minutes on his clock. Can you imagine that? This only Sasha Grishu can, can you know, uh, get. The, the 
so huge time troubles. Uh, and so far he draw all the game in the tournament, so uh, it's it's very fascinating. And uh, Maxime Vachel Lagrave still have one hour on his clock, so he can calculate everything very precisely. Uh, what Grishu can play here? So the best move for him is a bishop on e6 and the continuation would be for example bishop on a3 as planned, king e8 and after knight on e6, f takes on e6, rook f4 defending the pawn, knight d5 attacking the rook, rook f3 and the game could continue and white could stand uh, quite okay here. Uh, so uh, maybe Grishuk didn't want you to uh, to play this line. So he play knight on a4. The problem is this is a losing move. So feel free to pause the video right now. You have one hour on your clock. So take your time and find the winning continuation for Maxime Vachier Lagrave. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Ready? So the move you have to find is actually a rook on e4. Rook on e4. And now these two pieces are under attack and something has to be done um, about that. So b5 actually doesn't work because rook on c4. B takes on c4 and now rook on f7 winning the game. King e8 and now rook on c7. Uh, rook d8 with some, you know, nasty threats, but simply bishop a3 and that's definitely winning for white. Now uh, this pawn is under attack, this pawn is under attack, this pawn is under attack. And uh, there are also some nasty, nasty threats here with check. And then uh, when the king moves to f7, then there, there's gonna be another discussion discovery here so a uh, very bad position definitely winning for white so b5 doesn't work what can work knight b6 defending the bishop also doesn't work this time bishop on a3 with check king e8 and now knight on f7 this is move to find knight on f7 and now if bishop on f7 that's not the best move uh, but bishop on f7 it's met with e6 uh, and here, of course, uh, bishop can't move to g8 because of checkmate on f8. That would be a disaster, of course. So uh, bishop on h5. So uh, giving back some material. The problem is rook e on f4 winning because now we have a checkmate coming. So the only move what black can play is knight on d7, sacrificing the knight. Uh, e takes on d7 with check, so king d7 and only now g takes on h5. And now with bishop extra and very very active rooks it's enough to uh, win the game. So knight on b6 also doesn't work um, and the last try would be um, bishop on e6, maybe even the best. But if we look at this uh, closely uh, it's not really greatest because knight on e6, f takes on e6 and now bishop on g5 with check, king e8, now rook on f3 because rook, rook was under attack and now this rook still attacking the knight so something have to be done about that. So for example b5 the problem is now rook e on f4 and look at the rooks of black. This rook has nowhere to go. This rook has nowhere to go because this square is controlled. Uh, this square is also controlled. So a black are in totally bad position. Nothing can be done. So uh, black have to remaneuver the king somehow. For example, king on d7, but that's three tempi. So white just gonna, uh, you know, get to the seven rank. Um, rook on f7 with check, king c8, and now rook g7, king on b7, and h6. Um, and, and black can only play something like a5, but it's not enough. h7, knight on c5, let's check who gonna be uh, first with the pawn. So a uh, bishop on f6 now is very, very strong. 
Uh, we have a4 still attacking and now rook on f7 attacking the rook. So rook has to be moved, rook h on e8. Now g5, a3, g6, a2 looks very scary, but it's not because rook f1 just on time. Uh, and yes, uh, white gonna sacrifice the rook because can. And now uh, king on g2, rook a on a8, because now uh, of course g7 and uh, h8 is coming. So g7 and now black has nothing to do, have to, I don't know, attack the, the, the bishop, but it doesn't work as well, because now h8, a promotion to the queen and after exchanging, uh, of course, uh, white is winning. This is uh, extra rook, so definitely is winning. So after rook on e4, uh, the position is totally winning. And now interesting thing, because Maxim Vachelagraf was asked if he uh, found this move. And he said yes. And why he didn't play that? Because he forgot. So he had a very good plan, but he forgot to play that. And, and he played uh, nearly immediately bishop on a3. Can you imagine that? He played bishop on a3. And now um, we have c5, so blocking that check. And now rook on e4 doesn't work anymore because the bishop is in this dream position. So not anymore on c1. And that's a huge difference because now the same doesn't work. Bishop on e6, let's try. Knight on e6, f takes on e6, and now bishop can't check here, okay? And can't check also here because this knight um, defending a c5. So that doesn't work. Rook on g5, rook is under attack, have to play rook g5. Knight c3 attacking the rook, so uh, rook c4. Knight b5 now attacking the, the bishop. So bishop is forced to take and the uh, king is totally safe now. Uh, king on f7. Rook f4, uh, king g8, and everything is fine for black. Uh, white can try something like rook on g6 and, and get this pawn. Uh, it looks pretty strong, but uh, actually it's very easy to defend. Black can even be uh, a bit um, annoying and play first something like b6, bishop on e3, and now knight c3. Uh, creating own threat. So, for example, this fork would be a threat. King f2, and now rook h6. Uh, defending and uh, you know there are no threats no tricks rook h6 g takes on h6 now bishop d2 attacking the knight but knight can go to outpost very nice outpost um, on e5 attacking the rook um, defending also f6 uh, rook f3 position is totally equal and even black has some advantage uh, can push this past pawn uh, can be very very dangerous so uh, not really the way to go. Uh, rook on e4 doesn't work anymore. Uh, this is why in this position we have e6 by uh, Maxime Vachir Lagraf. Uh, and here, of course, uh, f takes on e6. You already know it doesn't work because of rook on f7. And that would be a very, very strong move. Uh, so f6 we had in the game and now bishop on c5 because now after move uh, e6, rook is attacking uh, c5. So bishop on c5 is possible. We have knight takes on c5. We have rook takes on c5. Uh, and in this position is the move 33. So still have to make eight moves. Um, and Alexander Grishuk have, believe me or not, only one minute on his clock. So he almost blitzing all these moves. Uh, he found a way how to play. Uh, here he could play a much better move actually, because he could play rook h on c8, defending the pawn on c7. So he could save this pawn. Uh, and then after exchanging, the minor pieces he could be in this position uh, however first he takes on g5 and now uh, Maxime Vachel Lagraf didn't take the bishop but first he um, take the pawn uh, so we have king on d6 and now rook on c4 so uh, Grishuk actually lost this pawn and that was unnecessary and uh, here we have a5 so uh, very low on time, Grishuk just tried to, you know, push the pawn. 
The best continuation for a Maxime Vasil Lagraf is a rook on d4 actually and that's all he can get. Of course king on e7 uh, losing on the spot because rook on d7, a king f8 and now rook f1 with check and now these rooks will, will just win the game so it's impossible uh, but king on c6 could be played and now rook on d7 rook h on g8 uh, defending this pawn um, and now rook e on d1 and here Grishuk just uh, pushed his a pawn and um, so we have a4 we have e7 we have a3 rook d8 now black do nothing of course a2 and now king g2 by white that's what could be played um, and then after uh, promoting to the queen don't take this of course that would be losing because if, if taken then of course uh, white can pick up g8 and then promote to the queen so uh, not this way rook g on d8 first and now uh, e takes on d8 rook d8 and that would be the position which is slightly better for white and white can try to play against these two um, pawns but it would be very hard uh, but the game could continue and probably would be very long however here uh, Maxime Vachel Lagraf uh, set up some trap but not very fancy trap just rook on d1 and now um, if king takes on e6 then actually uh, rook on e4 and now if king on f6 that this would be a checkmate but I cannot imagine that Grishuk fall into this trap so uh, of course he would play something like king on f7 and then just rook d7 and that would be ju just threefold repetition because king f6 rook d6 uh, rook king f7 rook d7 and that would be a draw if black try something like king on g8 then um, rook e on e7 would be very strong and black would be maybe not in trouble because this pawn is very strong but that definitely would not be very clear uh, but uh, Grishuk of course didn't take on e6 he played king on e7 so it means that he try also to play for a win you know try to try to do something try to complicate um, the position uh, rook on e4 was played and now this is a threat a very dangerous threat you, we've seen already how dangerous is that so rook h on d8 by Grishuk we have rook on b1 and now rook d on b8 and here we have a rook on b5 now bringing the rook um, on the on the attack on the on the king side and trying to find some counterplay with these two pawns on the king side we have a4 so Grishuk still continue uh, pushing the pawn uh, we have rook on g5 and now a rook on g8 so defending this pawn not letting uh, Maxime Vachel Lagraf uh, to get any advantage here any counterplay we have h6 now simply g takes on h6 exchanging the rooks and now uh, taking this dangerous pawn on a4 and there are no more tricks in this game so uh, we have h5 by Grishuk uh, this pawn is of course pinned so uh, nothing can be done here this pawn is lost we have king on f2 now uh, rook takes on g4 rook takes on g4 uh, h takes on g4 king g3 and now king e6 uh, king g4 and the players still play to the end you know uh, we have king on e5 uh, king f3 king d4 king e2 uh, king c3 king d1 and now b5 uh, king c1 b4 king b1 b3 c takes on b3 king b3 and in this position of course it's insufficient material so uh, it's just a draw so the players don't need to ask for a draw anybody don't need to do anything it's just a draw and uh, and yeah so all the games in round four were drawn uh, it looks like the most boring um, round so far but this game was uh, quite interesting especially the lines uh, for uh, Maxime Vachel Lagraf and I would like to show you the standings 
So here we go. So Jan Nepomniaci, Maxim Vasil Lagrav and Wang Hao um, leading the tournament with two and a half points. Fabiano Caruana, Alexander Grishuk, two points. And Ding Liren, Kirill Alexienko and Anish Giri, one and a half points. So everything can happen. Still a lot of rounds to play, of course. Uh, we have 14 rounds now, just four uh, rounds passed. So um, feel free to subscribe the video smash the bell button and if you like this video press like if you don't like for some reason press unlike thanks for watching and see you in the next one